In today's video, we are talking about the Ultimate Trio. What is this? We're talking about methylation, mitochondrial repair, ATP production. We're going to talk specifically about SAMe, methyl B complex, and CoQ10. So stick with me. If you've got brain fog, if you have fatigue, if you have liver issues, if you have poor mood, all of these can be related back to possibly poor methylation and a lack of just quality B vitamins that potentially we're missing in our diet. So let's get into today's content. If we haven't met, my name is Dan. I'm the pharmacist here at MD Custom RX, and we are a pharmacy that talks about functional medicine. So please subscribe to our channel if you want pharmacist-backed truth about basic supplements and vitamins that can potentially improve your health, give you better quality of life. So let's get into today's content. At the end of this video, I will talk about some very simple testing that we could look at that looks at methylation. So there is a very simple genetic test that we can look to see if we have SNPs that is inhibiting our body from producing some of these activated B vitamins that we're gonna talk about in just a minute. So let's first talk about SAMe. This is s adenosyl methionine. So SAMe for short. So what is SAMe really doing? Think of SAMe is that universal methyl donor. It helps in a multitude of methylation processes. So I don't want to get too technical here in today's talk, but just as it says here on the slide, it, is, it helps in an array of biochemical pathways, including neurotransmitter synthesis. So specifically, it helps with serotonin production, especially helps with melatonin production. It also can help with uh, what they call monoamine neurotransmitters, so specifically dopamine. If we're low in dopamine, if we've burnt out our do dopamine, we might benefit from SAMe, but it also helps with our norepinephrine and epinephrine. Epinephrine, uh, the other term for that is our adrenaline, right? So that's, we use the word adrenaline, uh, and what, what we're really talking about there is epinephrine. So if you are somebody there that is struggling with that fight and flight neurotransmitter production, Talk to your provider, talk to your doctor about possibly supplementing with SAMe. Now, that's not going to get you out of all the trouble, but it is something that can potentially be overlooked. And we can look at those neurotransmitter levels to see if, again, SAMe might help in your particular situation. So there's a specific genetic test that we offer here at the pharmacy. I'm not going to mention it by name, but if you want to give our pharmacy a call or send us an email, I'll give you our contact information at the end of this video. You can reach out to us. So... As it says here, neuro, neurotransmitter synthesis, metabolism of homocysteine. We're going to talk a lot about homocysteine in today's video, where if you haven't heard me talk already about cardiovascular health, homocysteine is kind of that rusty metabolite that could be an issue when we have poor methylation and homocysteine can build up in our system. We'll talk about this in a few minutes with B-complex. And homocysteine has this has been associated with cardiovascular disease and dysfunction. So... And then SAMe is important for detoxification. We'll talk more about glutathione because SAMe helps in glutathione production along with some B vitamins that we'll talk about in just a minute. So you can kind of already see the connections here with this ultimate trio, with the SAMe, with the methyl B complex, and then that spark plug to our engine or that sometimes people think of CoQ10 as the battery charger. So it keeps that ATP running with complex one, two, and three. So SAMe, as it says here, is good for glutathione production, liver health, so it helps to produce and helps to aid in glutathione production. It helps with muscle skeletal and joint discomfort, so helping with those re reactive oxygen species and helping to attenuate or lower those down. And then it can help with that positive mood. So sometimes we wonder, how could this one simple nutrient help with so many, looks like, un unsimilar issues in the body, it's because it's helping with neurotransmitter production. It's helping with catecholamine production, that norepinephrine and epinephrine. So that's how, it, you know, when we understand the why and the mechanisms, then it all starts to make sense. So a very simple overview. As I just said, SAMe is a universal methyl donor. It helps in critical reactions involving proteins, phospholipids, DNA, and RNA. Hormones, we deal a lot with hormone balancing here at MD Custom RX. So if you are somebody that is suffering with hormone imbalance, especially postmenopausal women, let us know in the comments below. Has Sammy helped you in those hot flashes and night sweats and so forth? Hopefully it has. 
Again, it's not the fix all be all, but something to again consider if you've looked at everything else and tried everything else. Maybe SAMe is something that's missing uh, in your supplement regimen. Development of cell membranes, degradation of histamine. So, so this is something new. On the next slide here, I'm going to show you this pathway. But if we don't have enough SAMe around, or if it's you know being overutilized because we're producing a lot of that metabolic waste called homocysteine that I just talked about, well, this could be a problem. So then we can't break down histamine well enough when we, if somebody's out there with um, mast cell activation syndrome, again, leave a comment below if you've had mast cell activation syndrome and have found SAMe to be beneficial, well, here's the mechanism why, or one of the mechanisms helps with the degradation of histamine. Uh, and then we talked about the norepinephrine, epinephrine, and dopamine production. So those monoamines, uh, SAMe is helping with those as well. Here's that neurotransmitter cascade I talked about just a moment ago. There's a lot on this slide. I don't expect you to memorize all of this. Uh, just know that SAMe interfaces here with um, the hist histamine breakdown, as it says there, and then also serotonin and melatonin. So one other thing to take away from this slide is that looking at all of these little cofactors here. So in the orange color here, hopefully you can see this. You might have to pause this if you're watching this um, on your cell phone uh, via YouTube, of course. But there's things like the copper, the iron that is important as well. And then again, those B vitamins, especially B2 that's listed here and B6. So it, again, these synergistic agents go hand in hand. So the SAMe with the methyl B complex can be very important for somebody's health. And then symptoms of low SAMe, as it says here, there's a multitude here, but let's just read through these here real quick. Depression, low mood, anxiety, talked about brain fog already. A real good thing for brain fog in our previous videos was look, looking at something called methylene blue. Um, just a quick add on there. Uh, chronic muscle skeletal pain, fibro-like symptoms there. A lot of those nerves which are dependent upon proper methylation and proper ATP production could be basically starving is a simple way to put it. And we might just need a little bit more uh, methylation support and B-complex support. And here's something interesting here, chemical sensitivities due to low glutathione. So something that I may not think about right off the top of my head, we certainly sell glutathione as a supplement over the counter. You can get glutathione IV, which is a great way to do it, but it's expensive, obviously. And there's some, um, if you don't like needles and things like that, there's a, an issue there. So what's another way around low glutathione levels is potentially looking at, again, methyl B complex and SAMe. We talked about the elevated homocysteine levels already, which can possibly contribute to low energy and oversensitivity to chemicals and toxins. And then PMS and mood swings. So due to possibilities and elevations of uh, histamine, which we just talked about just a couple minutes ago, we could have elevated histamine because we don't have the SAMe around to break down and to metabolize histamine. Okay, the second key factor here in the trio for helping with energy and production and methylation is methyl B complex. So there's a lot of different forms and formats out there. Uh, I would encourage you to look at our Shopify account, which is mdcustomrx.shop. You can look at the supplement facts of all the ingredients that are in our methyl B complex. And the key part is the format in which they are in. So especially the B12, uh, methyl B complex can help power the Krebs cycle and the ETC, which is the electron transport chain. Without B vitamins, SAMe cannot work effectively. Hopefully you've got that point already that SAMe needs B vitamins, B vitamins needs SAMe, essentially the way I look at it. And then folate and B12 help to recycle homocysteine, which we just talked about a few minutes ago. But we, that homocysteine can be metabolized and moved into glutathione but if we don't have the right nutrients, it might get recycled back into methionine, which is fine. Uh, but we, again, have to make sure we have enough folate and, and B12 around. Let's just take a quick look at folate. So vitamin B9, folate is a water-soluble member of the B vitamins. It's critical for maintaining optimal methylation pathways. So there's some issues here, though, with folate that I would just want to dive into for just a minute. But malabsorption could be an issue. That's one issue. And then genetic defects in the enzyme. So many patients have come in, they've been tested for this, which is the MTHFR gene. And if they have impairment or mutation, they may not be able to methylate or get folic acid into the usable activated format. So that could be a problem. 
So one word of caution here, though, I just want to take a quick minute and say that there are some issues. We don't want to just do everything in a methylated format and then take that as a supplement. We want to be careful here and, and be prudent about how we are supplementing because if there's not a deficiency here, we don't want to become um, hyper methylators either. So that is important to know. There is a balance here, just like with everything else. Again, I'm going to refer back to the where the we specialize in hormone balancing, especially for postmenopausal women. And you don't want too much estrogen or progesterone or testosterone. You don't want too much methyl B12 and so forth. So all of these things play in balance. Just be aware of that. So, but the activated form of folic acid, as it says here, the 5-MTHF, so 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, that's a mouthful, uh, helps to convert homocysteine into methionine with the help of B12. So bottom line, we need folic acid in its methylated form. We need B12 in its methylated form, which the body should essentially take care of. But if not, we, have, we can have some assistance here by taking a methyl B complex. So folate and oxidative stress. Increases in oxidative stress can potentially lead to taking that homocysteine and converting it more into glutathione. So the point here though, is if our body is under a high amount of stress, a high amount of oxidative stress, we might need more folic acid. So the point here, the take home point is have your folic acid levels tested. Find out where they're at and see if we need to supplement. When we're talking about methylation, mitochondrial repair and ATP production, we have to talk about CoQ10. I sometimes think of CoQ10 as the spark plug. Others might refer to it as the battery charger of the body whatever you want to call it, it's actually a misnomer. So coenzyme Q10, it's, it's not an enzyme, it's a cofactor. So let's just get that out of the way right off the top here. But coenzyme Q10 is a great antioxidant. It helps, as I said before, with helping with electron transport chain and helping with complex one, two, and three of the, of the electron transport chain, as it says here. And it helps with ATP synthesis. So again, it's helping to produce energy and in that process, helping it, well, really producing reactive oxygen species, which then we need to sequester and get rid of those through other antioxidants, vitamin C and so forth. So be aware of that. And unfortunately, as I talked about with SAMe production, CoQ10 follows suit here. It declines with age. Uh, the higher stress levels that we have in our body, CoQ10 is used up more. And then those with statin therapy. So just real quick, a uh, quick note, if you're taking a statin drug, I would encourage you to have your doctor uh, look at supplementing with CoQ10 because those statin drugs have a potential to block the enzyme that our bodies use endogenously to produce this antioxidant called CoQ10. So be aware of that. So if you're on a statin drug, if you're having symptoms of possible toxicity like muscle pain and so forth, Talk to your doctor about looking at supplement, supplementing with CoQ10. And then some real practical tips here. I just want to leave you with this. So, I mean, timing is, is very important. What you take these with is very important. SAMI should be taken in the morning. It can be stimulating. Like I talked about, it helps with dopamine production. It helps with norepinephrine and epinephrine. So that's not something where we take the SAMI at night and all of a sudden those levels are boosted we could have a problem falling asleep. So again, being aware of these kind of like clinical pearls, I like to call them. So that's the scoop with SAMI. Same thing with the methyl B complex. Usually I recommend taking that either at breakfast or at lunch. That is something really important in my opinion. Generally speaking, vitamins and minerals should be taken with food. Again, that's a general statement there. And then like your herbs and so forth are generally taken on an empty stomach. And that's not a, again, that's just a very general way to think about vitamins and minerals and supplements and so forth, different herbal extracts. And then CoQ10 is lipophilic. What does that mean? It's, it's fat loving. CoQ10 should be taken with a fatty meal. Uh, so that it aids in better absorption. And then again, consult your doctor. I'm not telling you to start these supplements, this video, all of our videos are for informational purposes always, of course. But if you're on SSRIs, if you're on a statin drug, if you're on anticoagulants, you've got to be careful. Supplements also have risks as well. So be aware of that. So again, just to recap here, the ultimate trio for methylation, mitochondrial repair, and for ATP synthesis, I would encourage you to look at SAMe, 
methyl B complex and CoQ10. So I hope you found value in today's video. Please leave a comment below. If you've taken these supplements, what were your benefits? Did you have any side effects at all either? So I would love to hear from you below. I try to respond to as many comments as possible. And then also, more than half of you that are watching our videos are not subscribed. So please, if you're looking for some very basic functional medicine truths that are backed by a pharmacist, please hit the subscribe button. That really helps to encourage us and to encourage me to get more videos out there. And again, some very practical ways to live optimal health.